金だー達夫Welcome everyone to the 23rd episode of Takisoba with a review for one of the most classic anime films ever, Akira. I'm Anime Casual Nate, as always here with the Anime Fanatic Malesh. Yo! Akira is from a time where anime was extremely niche in the West, yet has managed to become a cult classic over here. I was eager to see how it lived up to his reputation. Akira has always been an anime that I've wanted to see since it's held in high regard. But after watching it, I can say I don't get the hype for it. Did it live to your expectations, Nate? I just didn't know what to expect. Ultimately, I found the plot so incoherent, I didn't enjoy this as a film, but as a work of animation, I did enjoy it in that regard. Now let's talk about this whack story. Akira came out in theaters in 1988. It takes place in the fiction of Neo Tokyo due to the Otokyo getting destroyed by a nuclear explosion 31 years prior. World War III has occurred after the fall of Tokyo, but has since ended. Despite that, Neo Tokyo is filled with rampant biker gangs, crazy protesters, and corrupt politicians who are driving the city into the ground. The story follows Kanida, the leader of a biker gang who gets attacked by the police. During the attack, his friend Tetsuo gets caught with a strange boy that nearly kills him. Tetsuo gets taken by the military and has now received mysterious powers from the boy that attacked him. Tetsuo breaks out of captivity, embarking on a quest to get revenge on the government for making him endure so much pain. Along the way, he destroys everything in his path out of hysteria. When it's put that way, the story doesn't sound too crazy for an 80s sci-fi. However, it's just not that sensible in the actual film. Early on, it's clear to see that the setting is dystopian cyberpunk, and the film is actually so old that Neo Tokyo wasn't really a big trope yet. Regardless, we don't understand anything about the mysterious child, why the government kidnaps Tetsuo, why they give him any powers, the extent of Tetsuo's powers, who the mythical Akira is, and when some of these things finally are explained, it still leaves confusion. I thought the overall pacing was very slow, and even after finishing it, I couldn't pinpoint where the climax was, leaving me very unsatisfied with the ending. Let's just get into the characters. Kaneda and Tetsuo are basically the two main characters. Kaneda is the leader of a teenage biker gang where Tetsuo is also a member. Unfortunately, I'd be hard pressed to say who else is truly a main character. Kaneda has other lackeys besides Tetsuo, but they don't add much and they're pretty forgettable. At some point, Kaneda meets a woman named Kei, who is part of the resistance movement. She does contribute to the plot, but I feel like her character was expressed blandly, and the pseudo-antagonists simply use the overused scientists and military leader archetypes. I consider Kei a side character, but Kaneda does get attracted to her, and he ends up helping her throughout the film. Most of what the side characters do hardly matters, and they receive no development. They are all stock characters who I could not care less about. The studio should have made a TV series elaborating on who these characters are, and then made this film the conclusion. Tokyo Movie Shinja was the ones behind Akira. They're an older studio that has helped produce anime classics such as Lupin III and Detective Conan. The main selling point of Akira is the incredibly fluid animation that it has. I was thoroughly impressed by how well it held up for a film in the late 80s. The art style is a bit lacking though. There's not enough variance in how the characters looked. Major blockbuster releases for video games and film are called AAA, so I would call Akira's animation quadruple A. Most modern anime don't really have what we call fluid animation, except in very special scenes, usually action scenes. But Akira goes all out, with astonishing fluidity almost non-stop, with unbelievable attention to detail and sublime artwork for the backgrounds and cityscapes. I'd also agree that the character design is lacking, and everyone has the same face, but I didn't mind it too much. Akira has one of the most unique art styles from any anime, and its most memorable scenes, particularly this bike scene, have inspired many great Japanese works of animation in the decades since. The soundtrack for this film was a little bit on the light side. Many scenes utilize no background music for dramatic effect, which works well, especially when they're in space. But at other parts, the lack of background music kind of bored me. The anything that played during the credits was alright. As for the soundtrack, it was filled with eccentric tracks that somewhat fill what was happening. I didn't love the soundtrack, but I thought it was alright. I watched Akira with a dope 2001 English dub that featured my favorite English voice actor, Johnny Young Bosch. 
Unfortunately, this dub conflicts with the lip syncing that causes a big distraction. I also watched the 2001 redub, which had an excellent cast all around, including Wendy Lee. The 2001 dub is considered to be superior, but the original English dub from 1988 is on the Blu-ray and DVD, so it's always there if you're really curious to hear such an old anime dub. I think every single bit of animation was god tier, but I liked none of the plot. I appreciate film in general, but I got nothing out of Akira other than just two hours of eye candy. The bizarre story, lackluster pacing, and bland characters just left me disappointed. The film was based only loosely on the original manga, so you might want to check that out. I've heard it has a much better ending as well. However, I'll still recommend Akira to anyone who's really into animation, because this film is a historical landmark for that. And if you were already curious about watching it, I think you definitely still should. Anyone who's not interested in the cult aspect of it should just skip it then. Akira disappointed me. It was a beautifully animated film with no memorable characters and a vague story. I can only recommend this film if you want to see what's considered an essential anime film. Beyond that, there's no point in seeing it. I certainly have no desire to watch Akira ever again. Akira can be streamed for free on Yahoo View with the English dub, or on Hulu with the subtitles, with a paid subscription. You can also purchase the Blu-ray and DVD. As always, if you've already watched Akira, click the first link in the description for a post-review discussion, which includes light spoilers. Thanks for watching our review of Akira. Please click like or give it a comment for feedback. We'll see you guys next time with the review for the anime Kata Nagatari. Ciao!